everyone, I'm Diane Danzibrink, the menopause counsellor and founder of Menopause Support. And today I'm here with my friend and colleague, Amanda. And Amanda's gonna to talk to us a lot about menopause and the workplace. Thank you for doing this. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, Amanda is going to introduce herself, tell you a little bit about her, and then we're gonna move on to hopefully help you with some of the questions that you've asked about this and also give you some sort of background information that hopefully will help you as you move through the menopause in your career and your job wherever you are. Okay, so over to you lovely. Okay, so I'm Amanda Baldwin, I'm based in East Anglia. I have a HR consultancy um, that I've had since 2006 dealing with employers, employees, small to medium businesses, but we do do some work for larger employees as well. Um, prior to that, I worked at a HR director level, manager level, assistant level, and got 34 years plus experience in <laughs> HR, which now makes me feel really old. So yes, I've got a lot of experience in HR. <laughs> um, have a wide variety of clients from builders, hairdressers, uh, up to car dealerships, um, herbalists, personal protection officers, um, you caravans, name you name it, <laughs> there are clients or we've dealt with them. <laughs> Call centres, all sorts. So, and they yeah. range from very small they range to from very small, actually quite large. Yeah, they, they range from very small where it's sort of one man plus an employee. Um, up to a thousand plus employees, really. Yeah. Okay. So all sorts. Um, so she's a great person to get, and she's also very down to earth. Which, as any of you who have seen anything that I've done before, you will know that I like the common sense approach. Um, so hence, that's why Amanda is here. Um, and she's here on a Sunday, bless her, <laughs> on a Sunday morning. We did feed her last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but she's here on a Sunday morning. So lovely. Um. The thing that, so as you know, I run the Menopause Support Network Group, mm -hmm. and the thing that we get a lot of questions about, we get a lot of comments, the one that people are really, really confused about is what legislation is in place to protect them in the workplace, because we hear everything from <clears throat> good experiences to incredibly poor experiences. Mm. And if you're feeling particularly vulnerable and low and you're struggling, um, for a lot of people, they're actually not in a position to go and find that out for themselves. Yeah. So what sort of, as far as legally is concerned, what's there to protect women? Mm. Currently, there's no national legislation or anything like that on menopause so um, no policy so there's no policy at all although i will talk later on is that it's lovely to have a policy but it's not the holy grail so okay. we'll pick that up later okay okay but it's actually covered under the equality act 2010 so employees okay. and the way it's covered would be there are what they call protected character characteristics mm -hmm. can't speak sunday morning <laughs> protected characteristics neither of us could remember what we were doing earlier so. no we were trying to have a conversation it was <laughs> My menopausal fog <laughs> and Di's husband just couldn't stop laughing so yeah so you're covered under the Equality Act so that is age sex and any dis any disability so that's what they call a protected characteristic so I guess age and sex are pretty yeah and simple. also to a certain extent disability yeah but I'll talk a little bit about that so okay in the workplace you're protected from direct discrimination which means less fate favourable treatment suffered by an employee because of your age, your sex, and or a potential disability. Right. Indirect discrimination is a neutral policy that applies to staff in all the organ in the organisation. So that includes subcontractors. So when I looked on the questions, a yeah. lady said, I'm a subby, um, I give my services through my limited company. Am I protected? Yes, you are for indirect discrimination. So through the Equality Act? Through the Equality okay. Act, okay. Indirect discrimination. Um, and it protects staff, uh, staff again, who have one of the protected characteristics, age, sex, disability. Right. Harassment is an unwanted conduct towards someone which is relating to a characteristic. Um, and that's in relation to violating your dignity. 
um, you know, or giving you a hostile or intimidating environment. So can I just ask a question? So if, if somebody felt that their menopause symptoms were being made a joke of by their colleagues, yeah. is that... Yes, you can... Ra I've, I've actually got... I'll give you an example of this. Um, had a lay I look after this company. We had a lady who um, was going through terrible hot flushes, memory, memory loss, things right. like that. And someone stuck above her machine the seven dwarves of menopause. So she came back from her break, oh and goodness. this poor lady had this and was just beside herself. As you would be. And she, there's only two women in that room of ten. Mm. And obviously one of the men had put it up there. So didn't know what to do. The MD rang me, so what do we do? So we treated it as a grievance. So, you know, that's it. You can raise it if you feel you're being harassed or... Um, humiliated, treat it as a grievance. There's two ways to deal with a grievance. And again, not every company has a grievance policy. So have a look on the ACAS website that has fantastic step-by-step um, -step ways to raise a grievance. Okay. So I would say try and do it informally at first. Right. So go to your line manager and just say, you know, this is what's happened. Actually, this is what's happening to me. I'm really not happy about mm. it. How are we going to deal with it? If you can't then get it sorted out informally, which I think is the best way to go. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you've all got to work together. And they probably thought it was a joke. And they don't realise that actually, I'm quite low and that's really upset me. And I'm sure when we pointed it out to this lady, the guy that had done it, he was mortified. And he I was think, really upset. I think that's often the case. Yeah. You know, I've said this lots of times that not just with menopause, but generally in society, mm. if we don't understand something, we very often make a joke of it because we don't understand yeah. it. And yeah. I think, um, you know how, you know, kind of passionate I am about the mm. fact that we all get educated about this, but I think it's another good reason why we have yeah. education. Absolutely, absolutely. So we sat down, we talked to the guy, I pointed him, well, I actually printed off some of your stuff. <laughs> You will read this as your punishment, <laughs> not as your punishment. But actually, she's gone back to work now. It's fine. And she's it's resolved? In a, yeah, it's resolved. Okay. Also from that, because we have the conversation, is that it's a really hot environment that she's in. She's now got a fan. Okay. In fact, all the employees have got fans because they're all hot. Okay. They've, um, they always have access to water, which is another one that we'll pick up later on. There's, there's a fountain there now if they want water. Mm. Um, and it was, a, it was a good outcome. So from but your it was point, from ignorance, really. But from your point of view, did you... Was that informal? That was informal. Was that an informal, informal. chat? Even though it was with you, yeah, who looks yeah. after their HR. Yeah, it's informal. That was informally. Yeah. Okay. Only because the, the CEO didn't know how to deal with it. Okay. He's young. He's in his 30s. He said, what do I do? So okay. I'll come down and deal with it. Um, usually in a business, you'd go to your line manager. Um, if you're not happy going to your line manager, go to somebody of a similar standing within the business. Mm -hmm. Or I would actually say just go to the most sensible person in the company and get them to have a chat because okay. nine times out of ten, that's much easier, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and then if that doesn't work, you could go down the formal grievance route, which again, have a look at ACAS, tells you how to do the letters, tells you the process and what the outcome should be. And are all their resources free to access? All free, okay. all on the internet. When you Google ACAS, just make sure you get the ACAS.gov website, because there is one on there that pertains to be ACAS. Uh, and if you ring up, they charge you a fortune. You get, pay, you you have, get to have to pay, to pay for, your, yeah. for your telephone. So don't do that. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we do have... So we have law. Yeah. And there's basically. one more. Mm. Disability discrimination only, which is where the employer has failed to comply with the duty to make reasonable adjustments to assist the employee in light of their disability. Okay. So we'll talk a bit later on about how to... One of the questions was how do I approach my male manager or yeah. how do I approach my company? And I've done sort of a this is how I would do it, yep. this is how I advise people to do it, we'll pick that up. And could we, could we maybe then produce that as, a, as something that yeah. people could download from the Menopause Support website? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So we'll do that yeah. for you as well. Yeah. Um, so talking about... So as you know, a few months ago, I was um, on Good Morning Britain talking about disability and menopause. Mm -hmm. um, you're the expert. So, what does, what constitutes so disability? Disability is something that has a substantive and long-term effect ability uh, on your day-to-day -day ability to carry out your duties. So, if you have, like, brain fog or um, 
I'll give you an example. I do a lot with care homes. Um, one of the ladies there was having horrendous hot flushes yep. and brain fog, and she was in charge of the meds. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So responsible. Responsible job. job yep. Yep. You know, actually, she was a nurse, and you know, again, you we need to find a way to help these people because nursing is a real shortage profession. Absolutely. She's got forty odd years' experience and was not dealing with it all. So it is if it affects your ability to do your day to day job long term. At that point, it becomes. A disability okay and is there a set time for long term because I've read it's 12 months is that true or not no it depends we're not going to say three four weeks really. okay 12 weeks it okay. is I would say more than three months but the sooner you bring it to your employer's attention the better you because know, does you, that mean that it's then recorded it's recorded okay. so we'll talk about that there's only been two pieces of case law in the UK um, they're both non-binding, which means they can't be used as examples for future cases. Oh, so, really? That's interesting, because that hasn't that hasn't come up in any of the reporting. Well, it says on on the on the thing that it's non-binding, but just nobody's picked it up. Yeah, it just it's just interesting just, that that yeah. hasn't come up in yeah, any of the reporting. Yeah, you could use it, reporting. but it's not like this is the law, this is the case law on it. Okay. There's, because there's only been two. I personally think there's been loads more, but they settle them. Because yep. the companies don't want the publicity. You know what, let's just pay, shut them up. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Which is sad, really, because, uh, you know, when you're at a low, you don't want to push this forward. But actually, well, sometimes you, just you just can't. But if people had pushed it forward, I think we'd be a little bit further on, maybe down to where the we line. Are now. Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. Okay. So one of them is sex discrimination, and this is a great example to some of your questions, where the lady provided a doctor's note saying she was suffering from menopausal symptoms and she couldn't concentrate on time. And okay. again, this is a high flying lady who, you know, we talk about the glass ceiling, but actually, I was thinking about this last night after my gin and tonic. <laughs> It's almost a second glass ceiling, isn't it? Oh, oh, absolutely. You've got to think of it. It is a second glass ceiling, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And I think the thing is, I work with so many women now who have moved sideways. Yeah. And because you you of their menopause to. symptoms. You shouldn't have to. Yeah. But from a HR perspective, and, and not proud to say this, that I've managed high-performing women out of businesses in my youth, I wouldn't do it now, um, because their performance has suddenly dropped off, but there was no menopausal awareness. And I was in my 20s say, and 30s, I didn't know anything about it. But isn't that a great example of why oh God, we yeah. should be Absolutely. raising awareness? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I just sit there and think, ooh, actually this is what it is. But and we can all look back and say, I'd have done it differently yeah. if I'd have known X. Yeah, but since you've started your menopause campaign, I have to say we have been friends and for many bo years. And bored everybody silly. <laughs> no, but since since <laughs> Di, since you know, with all Di's history and everything, since going through all that and knowing you through all of that, yeah. Actually, if I get a lady now who's you know they're saying oh she's not performing, she's not this, I now go to the non-performance meeting with the menopause symptoms and go here you go. Could you just fill this in before we start? And yes, nine times out, said, you and I referred them to you nine times out of ten a lot of it is menopause and they don't I mean they don't know professional people in the medical profession yeah who I said oh I can't <laughs> do this I can't do with my staff I keep crying I can't remember anything I'm thinking goodness gracious me yeah and I said oh I think you need to speak to my friend Di and she said it's the menopause and she came out it's menopause I'm like hallelujah however you know <laughs> You're a doctor. <laughs> Which sounds really silly, but when you, you know, and again, that shows a lack of education for GPs, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and that's, can't... again, that's another one of the, you know, yeah. that's one of the campaign aims, isn't it? If they can't recognise their own symptoms... How the hell are they going to help anybody else? And I send them to die... Can you please help this lady? You just think, yeah, okay. So, this lady had provided a doctor's note saying she was suffering from menopausal symptoms. She couldn't concentrate. Um, and her manager male manager chose not to take any notice of her symptoms even though she had a doctor's oh yes because his wife had been through the menopause and, and he felt he knew all about it and was that because his wife had, had, had completely a different smooth symptoms passage through it the menopause it doesn't say how it was reported okay. but i think reading between the lines his wife had had a smooth passage and that was all the evidence he needed so they carried on oh, their performance okay. managed her and she was um, she was dismissed 
Right. Um, and then she won a sex discrimination claim um, and an unfair dismissal claim because, and the judge said, the manager had adopted a bizarre and irrational approach with non-female related conditions. In other words, get a grip, you plank, everybody's different. But he just didn't realise that. And essentially, he just used his yeah. own his personal wife. experience. His wife. Yes. Yeah. And that just shows, that's another really good example yeah. of why we shouldn't judge other people's experience by our own. And Ooh. I'm sure lots of you watching will have heard other women say, oh, I don't know what's wrong with you. Just get on with it. I got through it. I sailed through it. And that's great. Fantastic for them. Lucky you. But yeah. that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's not the case for 75% of women. Yeah. Um, and of course, those women that sailed through it, um, it could be that postmenopausally, they're going to be affected by the long-term health conditions, including things like the vaginal and urinary symptoms. So for somebody to say, you should get on with it, I sailed through it, is really not helpful. Um, mm, okay, and, lovely. So, And then the other example, I just thought I'd give you the two and then you can, it gives you a bit of a learning point. And they're yeah. all available on the internet if you want to Google them and, and have a look in a bit more detail. Um, this is where the employee was dismissed and then she was reinstated with back pain. And it's quite a recent one. And is this the Scottish court yes, one? Yes, it's been in okay. all the papers and everything. Yeah, and I just Scottish. read this and just think, oh my goodness. <laughs> really? So, really? So this lady was dismissed because of something arising out of a consequence of her disability. So she had heavy bleeding, needed to be near a bathroom so she could change a towel every 30 minutes. And she had stress, memory loss and other symptoms. Um, and her manager managed all the other reasonable adjustments, got her sitting near the toilet, gave her the fans, da, da, da. Um, and then the crux is which she couldn't remember if her tablets had been put in a jug and there was a risk that two male employees would have oh, drunk, from the jug, from drunk from the jug. Now, I mean, I'm not being funny, but I don't think two tablets in a jug would have given them that much. No. Wouldn't have made them very ill. So they dismissed her because she was accused of lying and bringing the court into disrepute and dismiss. It's so quite she, shocking, So really, she worked when you think in the public service, for. yeah. Um, and you just think, really? You know, you're grasping at straws here, guys. Anyway, the, quite, the tribunal quite rightly said her employer hadn't protected her when dismissing her and hadn't considered her conduct was affected by a disability. Memory loss and confusion are her disability. But to me, I just think, for Christ's sakes, what a waste of money. Why on earth didn't you just take the practical approach, ring 111 and say, they may have drunk from this jug. What's happened? What's the worst that what, can what's happen? What's the worst that can happen? They'd probably say, nothing. It does seem like a massive, massive overreaction. Yeah. Bearing so in mind so they've sm put yeah. some adjustments in before. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Okay. So as I say, I think there's loads more, but they've been settled and they're not in the public domain. And I understand that because, you know, you're not at your strongest wanting to go and take a case. No, exactly. But I do think nine times out of ten, it can all be sorted and it's practical and, you know, menopause is evolving 20 30 years ago we didn't have maternity we didn't have paternity we didn't have shared paternity which has just come out so people get so excited saying, oh we need a policy you do need a policy but it's got to evolve over time yeah and like di's got it into schools to be taught now it's got to be evolving i yeah. think we can't just say here's a policy let's stick to it because a one size does not fit all does it oh gosh everybody's no, because, so different well as you said you work with organizations where it's one person and one employee yeah. through to organizations with a thousand employees yeah. that's a totally just, different thing and then for if for uh, employers with a hundred thousand employees yeah. you know more, you look at the public sector probably a lot better equipped to deal with it because their policies are standard they go across the whole of their organisation, mm. whereas a smaller one just isn't. Mm. I mean, isn't. unions have been quite um, proactive around doing some work and issuing some sort of um, guidance, yeah, guidance yeah. and workbooks, etc. Around mm. this, Unison's got a good guide, and um, you can Google that one. Yep. It's for reps, but. I downloaded it and use it quite often because it's quite practical. Yeah, and yeah. the TUC um, yeah. and TUC Wales particularly yeah. have got a fantastic um, resource that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you can find those through their websites. Um, so from the point of view of 
So if people are thinking, okay, so now I understand that there is definitely legislation in place, mm -hmm. you've explained what that legislation means. Mm -hmm. So if they're now, I know we're going to do a second video mm -hmm. on you know, kind of reasonable adjustments, what you can do to help, how you can talk to your employer, etc. Yeah. But from the point of view of resources, yeah. Where would you apart from the ones we've mentioned, where okay. else would you point people? Um, die, obviously. Your campaign <laughs> got to be number one. Uh, so that's menopausesupport.co.uk, um, where you can find me. Um, as some of you may know, um, as well as working with people one-to-one, -one, I also educate organisations. I go in and talk to them about menopause, etc., etc. Um, so you can find me and those details there. Um, the Menopause Support Network, you can contact that from there. And probably the most important thing you can do if you go to Menopause Support is you can sign our petition, which is the hashtag Make Menopause Matter campaign. That calls for three things. One is mandatory GP education in the UK, which we desperately need. The second one is awareness and guidance within e in every workplace. And as Mandy says, it's evolving, but we do need to push for it. Mm -hmm. um, and the third one I'm delighted to say is no longer a wish because we've got it. Um, and that is to have menopause included in the new RSE curriculum. And from 2020, that is going to happen. So that's great. Um, apart from that, where else? Okay, so starting at work, um, look at your staff handbook if you've got one. There might be a flexible working policy, a mental health policy, stress, equal opportunities and diversity. Failing that, the CIPD, if you Google CIPD, that's the professional body for HR people. Oh, they yeah, have I couldn't remember what that stood for the other day. <laughs> the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. Thank you. There we go. Um, they have just produced three guidelines and they're really good really good yeah. I was, I've downloaded them they've tweaked them since I looked at the first ones excellent so have a read of those ACAS now they have good discrimination grievance all sorts but they have nothing about menopause on there which I thought was really quite, well I couldn't find it and I went in the search and put menopause and it just came up with one of the directors had obviously spoken about it and that was it oh my goodness but okay. they have fabulous equality the equality act is covered really well on there okay um and everything else and um, the unison guide for reps is quite good and then the other one is that you pointed me to mm. is the facu fa faculty of occupational medicine yeah at the royal college of physicians and there's a guide on menopause if you just put in foc FOC, guide, Guidance on Menopause, that's a good document as well. Okay, mm -hmm. and you don't currently have a website, do you? No, my, <laughs> my website was hacked. <laughs> don't look, it's been taken down now, but in the next two weeks we will have one coming up and I'll put it on the Facebook page. Okay. Um, and we will have the policies and everything available and on there if you when want. It, when, it was, when it is available, it is? Um, HR Answers limited.com thank you Super. answers if you're from down south answers from if you're up north <laughs> depending on who i'm talking fantastic. to fantastic yeah so all right lovely on there. fabulous yeah. so thank you for that so what we're going to do now is we've done that done part one so part two is really going to be about how you can start that conversation with your manager or organization um, we're going to be answering some of your questions and also Mandy is going to be talking about reasonable adjustments and what they should be. So that's part one, part two coming up and we will see you again soon. Thank you for watching and thank you for doing it. No problem. Thank you very much.